Hey guys, in this tutorial I want to show you how you can add a button to your Instagram filters in the Spark AR Studio, which triggers some action when you tap on it. In my example here, I will trigger a particle system when I tap on it and when I tap on it again, the particles disappear. But this is just an example, you can trigger any other action you want with this button. So yeah, just follow along this tutorial and in the end you will have some cool button which triggers an action here in the Spark AR Studio. So let's start! Hey again! So let's create a filter with a button which triggers some action when we tap on it here in the Spark AR Studio. The first step we have to do is to import a graphic for our button. I have created this button here in Sketch but yeah of course you can create this with any app like Photoshop, Illustrator, Canva or any other um, app you feel comfortable with. Um, yeah, just make sure the dimension of this image is 500 times 500 pixels. So then just import it by drag and drop it to your assets panel. And then when you have imported it, just click on the texture, go to the right hand side and make sure you set the compression to none. So it has the best possible quality. So after we have done this, we can start creating the filter. The first thing we will do is to create a material for our texture. So for this, we go to our assets panel, click on the plus and here select material. Now I will rename this material to button and then I will go to the right hand side when the material is selected, set the shader type to flat and select as a texture my button texture. So the next step is that we go to our scene and here we will create a plane object. So for this we click on the plus and here we search for plane. After we have created the plane we will see this in our viewport. So I will go now to my scene and rename the plane to button. When I have selected the button plane I will go to the right hand side and set the material of this plane to my button material. And now we can see that we already have this button in our viewport. At the moment it is a little bit small so I go up to my transformation properties and here I will set the scale to 2 for x and y. So now here is my um, button right in the middle of our screen but I want it yeah, down there so for this I go to my viewport here to my 3D viewport and now when the button plane is selected I can just drag and drag it down to the position where I want it to be so I think that it's pretty nice so yeah I will leave it here so the next thing is that we open our patch editor at the, and then we need to drag and drop our plane our button plane to the patch editor when we have done this we will get this yeah purple and patch in our patch editor which says button and has, has one output the object output so now we have to create some actions for our yeah for our button i want that when i press the button um, yeah, some confetti start falling down from the top to the bottom and when I tap it again they are stopping. So for this I need to create a, a, an emitter first. So for this I go to my scene, click on the plus and now I search for particle system or when you type in emitter it also shows up. So when I have created this emitter it is also right in the middle and it is emitting some yeah, particles upwards. But I want some confettis who are falling down from the top. So for this I select my emitter in the scene, go to the right hand side, go down to the emitter tab here and here I set the type from point to line. Then I set the length from 0.1 to 0.3 and the birth rate to let's say 10. Then I go down to the speed, they are uh, very fast at the moment so I set it down to 0.1 and then I also go down to the particle tab and here I set the lifespan from my, of my particles to let's say 5 seconds. So now the emitter is in the middle emitting upwards but I want it at the top emitting downwards. To change this um, I go all the way up to at my emitter properties and here I set my rotation, the X rotation of my emitter to 180. Now it is emitting downwards. 
And now I just have to, yeah, push it up to the top. So for this, I go again to my viewport when this emitter object is selected and then I just drag it to the top. So now it is emitting downwards, but there are some gray um, yeah, particles. I want to change them to red particles, so we need a new material. So we go to the assets panel, click on the plus and here select um, create a new material. So I will yeah, just call this material red, then select the material, go to the right hand side, set the shader type to flat and then here as a color I select a red color. So now they are still great because we have to yeah, apply the material to them. So we go to our scene, click on the emitter, go to the right hand side and then scroll all the way down to our material step. Here we just click on the plus and select the red material. So now they are red and we can move on programming um, this this effect here in the patch editor. But of course you can trigger any other action here by pressing the button, for example make some planes visible or a rectangle or a frame or play some audio. So now at the patch editor we have to create some new patches. So we go to add patch and here we search for object tab. Then we just insert this and here we can already connect the object output of the button to the object input of the object tab patch. The next thing is that we add a switch and here we just connect the output, the tab output of the object tab with the flip input of the switch. And the last thing we have to do is that we extract the visibility of the emitter to our patch editor. For this we go to our scene, select the emitter, go to the right hand side, scroll all the way up at our properties and here we click on the little arrow next to visible. When we do this we will find a yellow patch here in our patch editor and now we can just connect the switch on and off output with the visible input of our emitter. Now the emitter is gone, that's good because now when we go to our, to our preview then click on those three lines here on the right corner and here we select simulate touch. Now when we tap on the screen, not at the button, nothing happens, but when we tap now on the screen, the emitter is showing up and we, when we tap again, the emitter disappears. As I already said, you can do this with any objects here in the, um, yeah, in the Spark AR Studio. You can extract the visib visibility property from all objects here from plane objects from rectangle objects and yeah you can also control other other types of properties with this object tab so yeah so yeah this was all the magic behind the button here in this bar AR studio if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to this channel it would be nice when you subscribe to it so thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye